Good morning, grade three. Before you start your math, remember to take some time to work on your drills. Uh, I see that we've gotten a lot of videos and people are doing really well with their multiplication tables. So that's very exciting to see. And hopefully we'll still be able to have some people graduate from the multiplication club this year. So keep working on that. Now today we are going to get started on another lesson that is quite challenging. The next couple of lessons are really quite challenging and when I remember back to my grade three classes last year and the year before I know that they really struggled with these next few lessons. So I've tried really really hard to prepare all the slides um, so that I'll be able to try and make this as clear as possible and I really hope that uh, that this is going to be a lesson that you can understand and that you can follow along. If you need to, just pause it sometimes um, and think about what we've just looked at, or maybe you need to go back and just watch a little part over again. That's fine, um, but hopefully uh, it will be clear enough. You'll be able to understand it. If you have any questions, you can always email me or text me, or if you're really struggling with it, get your mom or dad to ask me to maybe set up a Zoom with you just to do a math lesson together. But let's get started on this and see how we do. So we are working on division and multiplication today. This one's not as hard as tomorrow's, but it still has some challenging stuff in it. So if we are asked to draw dots inside circles to calculate or figure out what 12 divided by 3 is, of course we're going to start by drawing our circles. And how many circles are we going to draw? We're going to draw 3 because we have 3 groups, right? We have 12 items being divided into 3 groups. So we're going to draw our 3 groups. We're going to divide our 12 items between these 3 groups. You can see we have 4 8, 12 items. So that tells us then that 12 divided by 3 equals 4. So that one wasn't so hard. We've done this before. Now here's the cool thing about it. Did you know then that the opposite is a multiplication question? If 12 items divided by between 3 groups equals 4 in each group, then we can say 4 in each group times 3 groups equals 12 altogether. So our multiplication and division can be opposites of each other. 12 items divided into 3 groups equals 4 items in each group, or read it backwards, 4 items in each group times 3 groups equals 12 items altogether. Very cool. And you'll see in the next couple of lessons why this is important and how good it is at helping us to figure out answers to questions that might be too challenging otherwise. So let's see what we can do with this. We want to show 12 divided by 4 equals 3. And we want to show it by drawing one dot in each circle one at a time. So now here we've got one in each circle, so we skip count four. Now Mrs. Cedars was having you put up your hand, your fist, and then putting up your finger. So let's do that here then too. So we are going to skip count by four. So we've got four, next finger up, eight, next finger up, 12. So there we've got up to 12. How many fingers do you have up? It should be three as you can see also by the three dots in each circle. So 12 divided by 4 equals 3. That also means that if we do that backwards, 3 in each group times 4 groups altogether equals 12 items, 12 dots. So remember, we can go forwards and backwards. We'll go forwards this way with our division and then read it backwards for our multiplication. Let's see some more examples. This same division picture here, that's the one that we just had above, right? We had three in each circle. So three dots in each circle. This same division 
picture gives us four math statements. We can say four times three equals 12 because there's four groups times three in each group equals 12. But we can also say three times four equals 12 because it's three in each group times four groups equals 12. It's the same answer. We can also have two division questions, 12 all together, divided by three in each group equals four groups, or 12 all together divided by four groups equals three in each group. So you see that every division picture like this gives us four different statements that we can make two multiplication statements and two division statements. And if you look at our multiplication statements, you see that these are just backwards. Four times three is 12. That means three times four is also 12. And same as this, 12 divided by three equals four. That means 12 divided by four equals three. So we'll get lots more practice with this again. We want to write two multiplication sentences and two division sentences for this picture. Well, to start with, the very first thing we always want to do is find out, if we ha can, find out what is our total number of items. So here I see we have one, two, three, four, five in each box, so we can skip count by fives. We have five, 10, 15 stars altogether. So we know our total. That's the important thing. We start with our total. Well, now if we know our total is 15, we could say three times five, three groups with five in each group equals 15 altogether. Or we could say five in each group times three groups equals 15. So there's our two multiplication sentences. Now we need our two division sentences. 15 altogether divided by five in each group gives us three groups. Or 15 altogether divided by three groups gives us five in each group. So you can see we have four statements altogether, two multiplication and two division. Let's try this one. First thing we wanna do is find out how many lines we have all together. So we have one, two, three, four in here. So let's skip count. Four, eight, 12, 16, 20, 24 all together. So we have four in each group, we know that. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six groups. So then we can write our multiplication statements, six groups, times four in each group equals 24 altogether. Or four in each group times six groups altogether, six, sorry, four in each group times six groups equals 24 altogether. Excellent. Now we can do our division as well. Remember our total was 24. So start with our total, 24 altogether, divided by four in each group equals six groups or 24 altogether, oops, and I made a mistake there, divided by six groups equals four in each group. Let's try it again. All right, triangles. We have one, two, three, four, five, six circles in each triangle. So let's count six, 12, 18 altogether. So we have 18 altogether, we have six in each group, and we have three groups. So we know all our information, let's make it into a multiplication statement. Three groups with six in each group equals 18. So three times six equals 18. Or six in each group times three groups equals 18 altogether. Excellent, now we need to make our division statements. We always start our division statements with our total all together. So we're going to start with 18. 18 items all together divided by six in each group equals three groups. Or 18 items all together divided by three groups equals six in each group. Excellent, are you catching on? Let's see if we have more practice. Oh, something new. So what are two 
division sentences for this picture. So we don't need to do multiplication on this one, just the two division sentences. Now our division questions always start with the total items all together. Because remember a couple of lessons ago, I was saying when we're dividing, we always have to start with the biggest number. If I have 10 candies and I want to divide them between five people, I can do that. But I can't divide 10 candies between 25 people because I don't even have enough candies for everybody. So our, in division, the total number is the number I start with. That's what I divide. So we have one, two, three, four in each box. Four, eight, 12, 16. So 16 all together. So we have four lines in each set and we have one, two, three, four sets. Equals 16 all together. So this is going to be interesting because we have 16 all together divided by four lines in each set equals four sets. Or we have 16 divided by four sets equals four lines in each set. So you can see they both look exactly the same. They're both 16 divided by four equals four. But when we know what we're talking about, we know we're saying two different things. 16 divided by four lines in each set equals four sets. And 16 divided by four sets equals four lines in each set. That was a bit of a trick one. Two division sentences, but they're exactly the same. How about some practice here? Draw a picture and then write two division sentences for the picture. So we have our information. We know we have 12 dots all together. We know we have four dots in each circle and we know we have three circles. So we have all the information we need here. We know what our items are. We know how many sets of items and we know how, how many in each set. So we have all the information we need. Let's start with our sets. It says we have three circles. So there we have our three sets. Then we have 12 dots with four dots going in each circle. There's our 12 dots. Let's put four in each circle. There we go. Now we have just shown this division sentence. Now we have to write out the division sentence for it. And there's two different ones. We would have 12 altogether divided by four in each set equals three sets. And also 12 divided by three sets equals four in each set. So those are the two division sentences that can go with our picture. How about 10 triangles, two triangles in each square and five squares? Again, we have all the information we need. We know what our items are. We know how many items we have all together. We know how many sets we have and we know how many go in each set. So we have all the information we need. All we need to draw, do is draw it out. So let's start with our sets. Five squares, it says. There we have our five squares. Then we have 10 triangles all together. There's our 10 triangles all together. Now we want to put two triangles into each square. There we are. So now we've got everything separated and divided out equally. Now what are our division sentences then? We have 10 items all together divided by two in each group equals five groups. So 10 divided by two equals five. We also have 10 items all together divided by five groups equals two items in each group. So 10 divided by five equals two. Let's try when we don't have all the information we need. We have 28 dots with four dots in each circle, and we don't know how many circles. So we do know how many dots we have all together. That's our important thing that we need to know if we're doing division. So we start with that. Let's start with our 28 dots. There we have 28 dots. We want to put four dots in each circle, but we don't know how many circles we have. So let's start by separating these 28 dots into groups of four. 
there we go. I took all 28 dots. I just moved them around and made them into groups of four. Now I can go ahead and make circles around each group. And now I can fill in this question telling me how many circles, because I see it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven circles that look an awful lot like buttons again. So when I have 28 dots with four dots in each circle, that gives me seven circles all together. Excellent. How about if I have 15 lines, three groups? I don't know how many lines in each group. So this time I have different information. Again, I know my total. All together, I have 15 lines. So that's important to know. But this time, I know how many groups I have but I don't know how many go into each group. Well, let's start with our total, 15 lines. There we have our 15 lines. Now we need to make them into three groups. We just don't know how many in each group, but it's easy to make them into three groups. So we start by handing them out one at a time into three groups. Let's do our skip counting here. Skip counting by threes, remember, fingers up, so we should have one finger up for these three. So that's three, six, nine, 12, 15. And how many fingers do you have up? You should have one whole hand up. That should be five fingers. That tells us we have five lines in each group, which you could see here too. But even if you weren't looking at the picture, if you were doing your skip counting and putting your fingers up with it, you should have been able to tell that it's five in each group. Remember, there is a multiplication sentence for every division sentence, because remember we said you can just do the division sentence backwards and that makes it a multiplication sentence. So that's a big reason why we are learning our times tables, because division's a lot harder to do in your head. So if you know your times tables, your multiplication facts, it's a lot easier to figure out the answers to division questions, because all you do is switch it around and make it multiplication. So for example, if we have the question, what is 15 divided by three? I don't know, but I know what times three equals 15, because I know my five times tables, and if I skip count five, 10, 15, I know that it's from the five times tables. So 15 divided by three equals five because five times three equals 15. So that's why it's very helpful to know your times tables. That's why we're working so hard on them. Now let's say that we have a collection of dots. We want to divide it into 10 groups of five dots each. Let's start with that part of the question. Let's skip the bottom part for now. Let's just divide our collection of dots into 10 groups of five dots each. What information do we have? We know how many groups, 10 groups. We know how many in each group, five in each group, but we don't know how many altogether. It just says a collection. But if we do this, if we divide it into 10 groups of five dots each, we'll be able to figure out how many altogether. So there we are. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 groups of five dots each. Well, we can skip count that to find out how many it is. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. So we have 50 all together. So that tells us that 50 divided by 10 groups equals five in each group or 50 divided by groups of five equals 10 groups altogether. Now we can go to the second part of our question. The second part of our question is, if we take these 50, how many groups would there be if the collection was divided into groups of 25 instead of groups of five? So here we've got our 50 and we've divided them into groups of five. What if instead we want to divide them into groups of 25? Well, it's quite easy the way that I drew it here because now we can just count out groups of 25. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. There's one group. And 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. There's another group. So there we have 
two groups of 25. So there's the answer to our question. 50 items divided into groups of 25 equals two groups. And 50 items divided into two groups equals 25 in each group. I think we're starting to catch on. If we have chairs in a room, they're organized into 10 rows with 10 chairs in each row. We're just going to do this top part for now, not the bottom, because we know there are 10 rows. That's our sets, or our groups, 10 rows. How many in each row? 10 in each row. We don't know how many there are all together. It just says chairs in a room. So we need to figure out how many all together. Well, let's start with 10 rows of 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 rows of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So 10 chairs in each row and 10 rows. So now, of course, if we skip count by 10, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 chairs all together. So we can do our division statement. 100 chairs divided into 10 rows equals 10 chairs in each row. Or 100 chairs all together divided into 10 chairs in each row makes 10 rows. Now the question is, if we wanted only five rows instead of 10, then how many chairs would be in each row? Well, let's just take a row from the bottom and move it up to here to make a long line. And we'll just keep doing that. So we move this one up, there's one row. Move that one up, there's two rows, three rows, four rows, five rows. So now we've moved our 10 rows into five rows. How many chairs would be in each row then? Well, let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Now we have 20 chairs in each row. So our division question then is 100 chairs all together divided by five rows equals 20 chairs in each row. Or 100 chairs all together divided by 20 in each row equals five rows. So you can see there's different ways of writing the same information. Um, I think this is one of our last ones. Explain using groups why 48 divided by 6 should be greater than 48 divided by 8. Now we did talk about this last week a little bit. So the more people that you're sharing things between, of course, the less that each person gets. If you have a pizza, from the store and it's in eight slices. If you have eight people that are sharing that pizza, they're only gonna get one slice each. If you have only one person, he gets all eight slices. And if you have four people, they will get two slices each. So the more people you're sharing it with, the less they each get. So that means the less people you're sharing with, the more they each get. So that's why 48 things divided between six people, they should get more than if I'm dividing 48 things between eight people, right? Because this is more people, so they should get less each. Let's see if we can show it. So here's 48 stars. We don't need to count them all. You'll just have to trust me that there's 24 and 24 makes 48 altogether. Let's divide it first into six groups. There we have one, two, three, four, five, six groups. And you can see we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight stars in each group. Now let's divide 48 into eight groups. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight groups. And they get one, two, three, four, five, six. They get only six stars each. So you can see that 48 divided by six is greater than, that means they get more each than 48 divided by eight. Here they get eight each, 
Here they only get six each. So remember the fish that we had quite a while ago, greater than or less than. Remember the fish is trying, always trying to eat the bigger number because it's a hungry fish. So if it's facing this way, that means that the bigger number is on this side. So if we think about what we were just saying, that the more people it's being shared with, the less they will get to have. So look at this one here, 42 divided by six or 42 divided by seven. Which one will have a bigger number? Which one will get to share, have more each? It will be this one because it's not sharing with very many people. 42 divided by six, they get to get seven each. But if we're dividing it between seven, they only get to have six each. So this is the smaller number. So that means that these people get more. How about this, 45 divided by nine or 45 divided by five? If you have 45 candies and nine people have to share them, they get five candies each. If you have 45 candies and only five people have to share them, they get nine candies each. So this is the greater answer. How about 63 divided by seven or 63 divided by nine? Remember, if you're sharing with less people, you get to have more for yourself. So which one is sharing with less? Sharing with seven or sharing with nine? Sharing with seven, you're sharing with less people. That means you get to have more for yourself. So this is the bigger answer. Oops, I did both on the same one there by accident. This is the bigger answer. And then this one here, you can see I did it already by accident. 72 divided by eight or 72 divided by nine. You're sharing with less people here, only eight people, so they get more of whatever you're sharing. So that's the bigger answer. You do not need to do all the questions in your workbook today. You can pause the movie here for a second so that you can circle the ones that I would like you to do. There's a lot on these pages. So if you can just do these ones, that's great. If you find that this is easy work to do, you can go through all of them very quickly, then do all of them. Or if you find you're doing these ones and you're still struggling, maybe you want a little more practice and you want to do the other ones, that's good too. These are the ones I would really like you to do. The other ones are extra if you would like to do them. All right, I know this was a longer lesson than I usually do, so I hope that you understood it all and have fun.